All right, let's get it. I guess what's been your uh, early impressions so far, just the players and how they're buying into what you guys are teaching the coaching? Man, they, they've done a really nice job. Um, just the energy, the incitement of what we're doing, um, the way they're buying in, the, the way they're competing, uh, it's, it's, it's fun, man. Um, both sides of the ball. It's just not looking at defense, both sides of the ball. Everybody out there is just really going after each other. And that's what it's supposed to be. That's the only way we're going to get better. So what are your early impressions on Emmanuel Forbes so far? What have you seen from him? I've seen a, a young man that is every day getting better, um, <laughs> getting used to my, my, my hard coaching. Um, he is uh, he's a kid that has a really good skill set. And um, just like the rest of the young guys, uh, he's out there working his butt off. And I've been pleased with him. What do you yep. like about Frank Luvo? Uh, Oost, Luvo? Yeah. Oh, man, everything. What's not to like about him? He is, he is the heartbeat of what competitive, hard-nosed defensive football is about. You know, and the only, <laughs> I remember he said, he said, Coach, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. And he goes as hard as he can. I love that. I, lo I mean, he's just he's a fun guy to be around, fun guy to coach. Well, those are the things that me and him are going to talk about. Um, you know, well, just between us. But <laughs> one thing that I always would do, I'll look at every team's interviews and I'll try to pick here and there. Uh, they'll figure it out when we play, okay? But I can tell you that the kid is working his butt off, and I'm pleased with where he is. I can tell you that 100%. Because if I wasn't, I'll tell you, I'm not going to come up here and BS anybody. All right? So it is what it is. Yep. I think we're all trying to figure out what exactly the defense is going to look like. Do you know at this point? Yeah. Because it's all so new, like how everybody's going to fit in together? Oh, I know how it's going to look, yeah. I mean, What's your next question? So, so in, terms of, in terms of Frankie Lubu, then, like, it seems like he can play all over, all over the place. How many different spots do you kind of see that he can potentially fit into? You know? Same, same, same as here. Why would I say that right now when people are looking? All right, they'll figure it out when we play. But we're happy, and I'm not trying to be a smart ass. All right, trust me, believe me, okay? But the advantage that we have right now is people don't know, okay? And we're going to keep that advantage until they figure it out. So I'm not going to say I'm not trying to dodge anybody's question, all right? I'm answering it the best way I can, but we have good players, and we're going to put them in position to help us win. And that's all we're going to get until, you know, after the first game. Obviously, this is a time to also experiment with some guys, like Jamin working a little bit at the end. What are some of the traits you see in him that maybe tell you it's worth looking at? He's a big, strong, fast man that has the ability to bend. All right, so we want to make sure we get our best players on the field in whatever capacity we can, can do. We have a history of playing guys in positions that they might not normally be used to, and uh, we're just trying to build our best 11 guys on the field, and he's a big, fast, willing guy that, that's excited about doing it. The new years of coaching with a guy like Damon who's playing for a contract, have you ever noticed a change in the, the makeup of a, of a guy who knows that the next deal is put in place? I really don't get into that, to be honest with you. Um, if, if this is why I feel. if you get comfortable or if you change because of a contract or not, um, shame on you. Okay, I remember uh, Charles Wilson told me he had just signed this contract, and I came down into the meeting room. I said, Wood, you got you, you got that big contract. He said, Man, I'm trying to get the next one. The day he signed it, you know, so that's that's the mentality that it has to be. You know, how do I get to the next one? How do I win a championship? You know, that's that's, you know, I'm not, I don't really worry about that. Yes, yes, and he, he is a, a, a listener. He's a, a guy that absorbs it. He has one of the best linebacker coaches in the league in Ken Norton. Who wouldn't want to listen to him? You know, and so, um, and then you have Bobby right next to you, and then the young guys. So um, he absorbs everything. And then at the same time, he's, he's really um, a quiet guy, but when he speaks, everybody listens. So along those same lines, Patrick, uh, having a Bobby Wagner mm -hmm. on your team, how much do you actually like, lean on him to help with the little things, to, to be that leader on the defense? A lot, a lot. I just told the defense um, this is the vet's responsible responsibility that the young guys are going at the speed of the vets. All right? If they, if they, you know, they have to make sure that that happens. We're going to get them to understand what they have, but to play with the edge and the tenacity that we want, all right, they're in the locker room with them. And Bobby does a great job of that. And Bobby does a great job of when I install something and if I don't do it as, as, as clean as I should, he'll come and say, hey, coach, maybe got you, Bobby. All right, go back in there and do it. And I, and I respect that. I take coaching from my players. I did it in Dallas. I did it in Green Bay, wherever. That's the only way you get better. All right, so we're all trying to grow and get better. So I'm not trying to say, hey, I have all the answers. 
as a defensive staff, we're putting this together with the players. It's our defense. It ain't my defense. It ain't Coach Green. It's the commander defense. All right, and we're going to get it done. So we take, it takes all of us. And along those lines, all right. and along those lines, you got a clean slate here. You got the whole brand new staff, guys mm -hmm. you haven't coached before. You're the architect of this defense. Mm -hmm. How fun is that challenge of having this clean slate and going, all right, let's start? Here. It's been really fun. What, what, what makes it fun is working with good people. Um, the defensive staff, I don't think I've seen enough written about those guys, Jason Simmons, uh, Tommy Donatelle, already talked about Ken Tapp. Man, we come to work every day and we compete, we have fun. Um, and then we get the opportunity to, to coach a group of young men that are willing and wanting to show that, that we can play high level defense. And so when you have that with the people that you work alongside with and the people that you coach, man, it's fun to come to work every day. Where else would you want to be? You know, once again, Jeremy, I said big, fast, strong with Jamin. Uh, Jeremy's the same thing. He's a, he's a really intelligent man as well. He can control the back end. He can make the calls. He can help the safety next to him. Um, he can help the star the, and the linebacker. So communication, I always talk about, is not only sin, it's receiving it, knowledge. And he is really taking that, grabbing it, and going to the next level with it. We want to be a chatty defense. Um, is there anybody in particular or you want to talk about a collective? All right, Jordan McGee. Okay, those two guys, I, I, you know, especially Jordan, I'll start with him. He's a guy that I've been pleased with because he, he doesn't carry himself like a rookie. All right, you would not know that uh, with the way he handles himself, the way he absorbs information. Um, he doesn't have a lot of mistakes. Hampton, we've put him in some difficult positions, to be honest with you, and he, he's um, answering the challenge. Uh, those guys that I want to see, can they go in there and play along with Bobby and Oos and Jonathan Allen and Payne and those guys. So uh, those two guys, we have put a lot on, and, and they're answering the bell as right now. No, it's fun, you know, it's, this is the players games, okay, and you're going to hear me talking about feed the studs, and we're going to design our defense, not we're going to, we're designing our defense around the players that we have. You know, I, I think if you're just limited to saying, hey, we run one scheme, and that's all we have, and no, you have to, you have the players that you have, all right, and you uh, make sure that you are putting them in the best position to play high level football, and we have really good players. And I'm excited every day to come in here and figure out what's the best way to use them. And one thing I want to say as well, we don't have 11 starters, okay? You're going to put this down, so don't ask me who's starting here. We have 17 to 18 guys. We're going to go out there. We're going to roll a deep crew and go out there and whip people, okay? So we don't have 11 guys. We have many personnel groups. And, and now can they own those positions um, when we put them in there? So when, when that comes, don't ask me about who's starting, please. Last one. When you what I've really been impressed with is uh, with the buy-in that they've had. All right, because uh, it's not you have to be selfless at some point to say, all right, there's not going to be 11. There's going to be times I come off the field for the betterment of the defense, for the betterment of the team. And there's nobody that's balked at that at all. Everybody's in. Everybody's all in, and they're. I mean, the meetings are so fun. They're so energetic because these guys every day are just just trying to get better and trying to do it the right way. And as long as we do that, we're going to have a hell of a chance. All right, thank you, guys. Y'all have a good one.